Hello, this is Colin C. at the Cell Studio, here to show you how to utilize my custom Mix Essential channel strips for Logic Pro 9. These channel strips cover any audio track, bus, or output. So if you have any MIDI or instrument tracks, make sure to render those down to audio first. Now every track has a settings box, and when you click on it, you'll be able to browse through my collection. I've got all basic start points for any material, bass, drums, effects, instruments, single drum processing, vocal processing for male and female vocals, as well as these utility ones, which will help fix some problems you might encounter while mixing. Don't forget as well these sends. So here we have a snare with bus two. My sends are broken into two categories, dynamic based stuff and effects based stuff. So effects are gonna be those delays and reverbs while dynamics are gonna be additional compression and harmonics and all that good stuff. So here's a typical little house beat loop that we've got here. It's not a bad loop, but what we can do in our loop processing, we can pull up the SSL console warmth. You know, you can hear there's a lot more body on that, and that comes from this impulse response in the space designer that's not a reverb, it's actually an emulation of a classic clean console. These do require you to have the additional content installed in Logic, so please make sure that's installed before you try that. Moving on to the snare, it's a little too boomy. Now I can fix that using my channel strips for the individual drum sounds. And in this case, we're gonna go down and we'll find the less bottom, more sizzle. So you can hear that kind of takes away that bottom edge leave some room for the other snare that I've got. So they come together a lot nicer now, so you can hear them all together. Now, a common next step in mixing is to group all of those drums together to a single output. So what we do here is we go to bus and change that to bus 10 on those output channels. So down here on the aux track for it, we can load in these mix group bussings. These, you can consider them to be the glue that's gonna glue all those four tracks together. And you can apply them to vocals as well as any material. I've got the vintage one there that's great on anything. And again, this is really just gonna tie all those four together. Cool, let's go back to the arrangement and um, talk about a little bit of correcting we can do. Occasionally we'll get loops or recorded material that is out of phase, which means the left and right channel are not in sync with each other. You can note that here in the correlation meter of the multimeter showing you that there is bad correlation going on that should be closer to plus one. We can't always fix everything, but in this case we can try and we can use the utility for the phase fix and respread. And what this is going to do is basically bring that back to center point. And now when we look at the correlation, we can see that we are much better in correlation. Loop still a little phasey, but it's not as bad as it was before. And we'll be able to fit this loop in the mix a lot better now. All right, last but not least is our output settings. Now this gets into mastering and I really encourage people to do it on a case by case basis for the individual song. But here in a pinch, if you want to make things louder, we've got that availability, poor man's master. That's just gonna make everything hard limited. Uh, here's one that's gonna prepare your track for a mastering engineer. What this does is run your output through another one of those impulse responses for a clean console and will allow us to kind of drop the decibel level so we can get enough headroom that the mastering engineer can do his job. So you can see my output has plenty of room or headroom as we call it to allow the mastering engineer to do his job. So those are my mix essentials for Logic Pro 9. Hope you enjoy them, and we'll see you next time.